Hey, David Breslow here with you. Here I am in the upper left-hand corner of your screen. Good to meet you. Um, this is a brief introductory video to the Wire to Win Total Tennis Program. I wanted to give you a flavor and a taste for what, what students who go through the program will see and hear. And you may be a teaching pro listening to this. You may be a student listening to this. Uh, it will be equally helpful, helpful for both of you. I'm going to be turning the video here on and off at different points. Uh, so don't let that bother you. Uh, so let us move on. Who am I? Let me move the video over. I have been a peak performance coach for almost 30 years. I'm a former teaching pro. Uh, as the director of mental toughness at the USTA National Tennis Center in New York, site of the US Open. Same position at Yvonne Lendl's Grand Slam Tennis Clubs in Greenwich, Connecticut, and at the National Junior Reebok Association in New York City. Um, I have been a peak performance coach for adults and juniors over the years, also professional tennis players and many amateurs across the country and the world, actually. So let's talk a minute about your students. Your students are already very loyal to you. They pay you for your expertise and they show up for lessons and you teach them everything you know, which is terrific. What I did was put this program together because I want to help make them even more loyal. There's nothing better as a teaching pro to know that you have a band of loyal followers that love what you do. And I wanted to offer something that they won't get anywhere else and that's exactly what Wired to Win is. You'll see a little more in a moment. So I'm always focusing on you and the student in this program. Uh, and all my communication really links both of you together. And I, f I find that's important. It's, it's a mindset that I'm, I'm wanting to build with the student to see this and you as, as their team. And so it's a mindset. I'm always linking the two together. I don't want Wired to Win to be seen as a separate thing because it's not. It absolutely complements everything that you're doing. No matter what your teaching style, that's the beauty of this program. No, what your, no matter what your beliefs about psychology or mental game or sports psychology, honestly, really doesn't matter. Uh, because this particular approach is going to complement your style and your belief system. First thing I say to everybody is, congratulations. You're here because your teaching pro believes in you and wants you to have every advantage. I am constantly le linking this program with you and your student. So here's what you can count on. Anybody who goes through this program, you can count on uh, a student who, who can speed up the learning curve with you. That's because they're in a much better place than they were before, you know, mentally, physically, and emotionally. They're able to digest what you're telling them and, and demonstrate it much quicker than they used to. That's one of the benefits. Another thing you can count on is a shift in behavior that normally takes weeks or months starts to occur in days, literally from session one, from day one, all sorts of things are beginning to shift. Also, they're going to reduce those annoying periods of poor play. We've all had them. All students have them. You know, those periods where it could be five points in a row, five games in a row. You see it all the time, professional level and amateur level. Those who go through this program are going to reduce that greatly. And, uh, and they're obviously going to perform at a consistent level more often. And one of the best things is they will become self-reliant because they'll be able to self-correct now, which is very cool. Because of what they learn and what they know, they will be able to correct and get themselves in position to where they wanna be no matter what is going on. So here's the premise of this program. Alignment is the key. And what do I mean by alignment? I mean that alignment of mind, body, emotion, and spirit, not spirit, mind, body, emotion, and energy. You could use the word spirit, some do, uh, but when in alignment, no matter who you are, when you're in alignment, everything you do, you do better. That is one of the keys, that is the basic premise of the Wired to Win program. Also, because the mental game for most players is confusing, it's vague, and it's frustrating to learn. I've heard this for years, no matter what club I go into, uh, Players are telling me, yeah, I understand a mental game is important. I believe it's important. Uh, I just don't know what to do about it. I read books and I get all these, these tips and strategies and all that stuff, and they work a little bit and then they don't work. Well, that's no longer an issue in this program. 
it's not about working a little bit or not working a little bit because I'm teaching laws that produce the desired effect that everybody's looking for faster. All tennis players have been looking for alignment. You have, I have, everybody's looking for alignment whether, they, whether they're aware of it or not. All the lessons we take, the books we read, the workshops we go to, without realizing it, we're looking for alignment. Mind, body, emotion, and energy. When those are aligned, that's when we play our best tennis. There's just no question about that. So in this program, there's no confusing psychology. There's no vague theory. There's no overload of information. Players don't need more information. In order to play your best, more information isn't going to do it. You don't need that when you're out there on the court because less is more and everybody knows it. Everybody knows it. So when good advice goes bad, it's interesting. As a pro, I'm sure you're giving your students good advice. Most pros are, certainly when it comes to this thing that we're calling a mental game. Here's the problem. There's plenty of information out there in the world, right? We live in an information world, very easy to get information. And what they're, what's gonna happen in this program is they're going to learn why uh, this information gets blocked and actually ends up leading to more confusion. And the real quick answer to that, and it's done in detail in the program, but just for you, the pro, as you know, so you know, is that although your intention is good, the advice is good, you have to understand that you're giving it to somebody who's already out of alignment. So all they have to work with is their history, their negativity, their limitations, their doubts, their fears, and their beliefs, and all that stuff. So you're tossing in this good information into a bad bucket, and it's not getting through. So they go out in the court, and they perform, and it doesn't seem to work, and then they get very, very frustrated. So I'm going to stop the video for a moment and continue on, but that's when good advice goes bad. So, tennis performance laws, here's the deal. They influence everybody. They bypass age, gender, personality, and experience, skill. Any factor you can think of is no longer an issue in this particular approach. It is in other models, but in this model, zero, zero impact. They're, they don't get in the way at all. The laws are precise in how they function, and they're predictable in their outcomes. Very cool. A lot of people like to know that. They also like to know that they're provable. You don't have to believe a word I say. Everything in the program is provable. People love that. Love it. And also, what I tell folks is your belief is not required and your opinion is completely irrelevant. How many places can you go and hear that kind of a statement? But I can make that statement with great confidence. Your belief in the laws is not required for them to do what they do. And here are some examples of what I mean. Uh, these aren't the laws in the programs, but just an example so you know what I'm, what I'm talking about here. Let's take the law of physics. As a teaching pro, you're teaching the law of physics all the time. When the face of the racket meets the tennis ball, that ball has a very precise and predictable response, right? When the face is closed, the ball is going down. When the face is open, the ball is going to slice. When the face is flat, the ball is going to travel flat in that particular direction. So if you're out on the court with me, and the ball is slicing and you're not intending to slice it, uh, you can't say, hey Dave, that law doesn't work. Of course it works, it's always working. You're just not using it very wisely. The second example, gravity. Everybody knows gravity is a law. So if we're up in an airplane <clears throat> and we're gonna parachute, the door opens, you walk over to the door, and before you step out, you turn to me and you say, Breslow, I don't believe in gravity. Okay, well when you step out, what's gonna happen? Mm -hmm. uh, I know you know what's going to happen. You're going down. What's the point of this? The point is that gravity and physics don't care what you believe. They don't care what I believe. They don't care what the student believes. They don't care what anybody believes. They just do what they do. Your belief about them is meaningless. Your opinion of them, completely irrelevant. That's why I love talking about this stuff. You can see how easy and how clear and how direct this is. There's just no wiggle room here. You can't run, you can't hide. So let me introduce to you some, a few excerpts from the actual program. What you're gonna hear is a pause in between. So I didn't go anywhere, don't worry about it. There's just a pause. And uh, let's go ahead and get you some excerpts from the actual program.
Okay, so we've been talking so far about a number of foundational insights and truths about performance. Um, and already I can tell by the responses that I'm getting from you guys that you're already shifting your perspective and your point of view. And now you've heard me mention the word law, and we haven't even talked about laws yet. So let's get more specific about that. You've heard me use the word a few times. What is a law though? Let's define it so that we're on the same page for the rest of our time together. And you can find this on page seven of your study guide. So here's how I'm defining a law. Something that's true for you, everyone, everywhere, at all times. Now, you have this in your study guide, you don't have to write it down, but notice that there's no gray area here. You cannot run, you cannot hide. There's no yeah, but here either. You can't say yeah, but, yeah, I get it over here, but I don't get it over there. Or I get it in the first game of the match, uh, I don't think I get it in the last game of the match. You can't say that. A law is a law. Everyone, everywhere, and at all times. There's nothing left out of this, folks. That's why I love talking about this stuff. There's nothing left out. Everyone, everywhere, at all times. So you, now, as you go through this, you won't be able to have any excuses anymore. You're actually going to know too much, which is actually a good thing. Okay? Now, this thing we call a mental game. You know that mental game is the common phrase out there. So my question to you is, how much of the game do you think is mental? Out of 100%, from 1 to 100, how much is mental? Let's see some responses coming through here. Here's 10%. Here's uh, 50%. 30%. Okay. 90%. Okay. 95%. Okay, 60%, 65%, 15%, interesting. Uh, every time I ask this question, it's interesting to get the wide range of answers, and the same thing is happening here. But here's the average. When I give talks across the country, the average number is 75. 75% of the game is mental on average, okay? What if I said to you it's 100% mental and I can prove it? Okay, because you remember I said to you earlier that I prove everything in this program and I have so far and I will continue right now. Here's the proof. 100% of your game is mental. Okay, here's why. As I teach it, and maybe that's the only caveat here, as I teach it, there are four parts of the mental game. They're not rocket science. Number one, your mind. Number two, your body, which includes your mechanics, what you're learning from your pro. Okay, among other things, I'm sure that you're learning from your pro. Mind, body, emotion, and energy. These are the four parts that make up the mental game in my world. Okay, now that's not the proof. Here's the proof. Every time you put your hand on the racket, all four of these elements are in play. You cannot separate them. I've worked with some of the biggest eagles on the planet who said to me, I'm going to find a loophole, Dave. And they never do. Almost 30 years, nobody's found a loophole and they never will. Please understand this. They never will because there's no way you can separate the mind from the body, from the emotions, from your energy. Impossible. And you must understand that every time you put your hands on the grip of the racket, these elements are causing experiences to happen, causing outcomes to happen, causing all sorts of things because they're always in play, okay? And you know that the laws I've been talking about so far have been laws by which your mind, body, and emotions function together to produce these outcomes, okay? That's, what you're, that's where you're headed in this program. Okay, so we've talked about a couple of laws so far, and you now know what it's like to be awake and alert and conscious. You now see that you're able to make new choices and you're able to do all sorts of things in a way that you never thought possible. Um, and I know this because you're telling me this. I'm not making this stuff up, as you know. So now we're at the point where let's talk about competition for a moment, because not everybody in this program right now is, is competing all the time, but I want to offer you something. Uh, we've just been talking about competition, and I just a moment ago asked you to define competition. And many of your answers revolved around things like battle, struggle, winner versus loser, 
last man standing, all that kind of stuff, right? And you already know from what we just did that most of those things caused you to have a heavy feeling, not a light feeling. And so therefore, you're going onto the tennis court already behind the eight ball because your definition of competition is a heavy one. And that's the experience you're having. So now I'm asking you to take a look at this definition of competition that I would like you to consider now. It is the opportunity to express all my talents fully and freely while overcoming my barriers with ease and awareness. Now you have this in your study guide. You have already been doing the second half of this. You have already been doing things with ease and awareness from the first few laws that we've been talking about. You're already doing this. But now I'm going to ask you to write this down, put it on a three by five card, stick it in your racket bag, take a look at it on changeovers, remind yourself, remind yourself of why you're there and watch what happens. What is your response to this one, light or heavy? You already know what, what your response was to your definition. We've, we've done that already. Take a look at this, just read it. Look at it. Do you get a light feeling or a heavy feeling when you look at this? Well, guess what? 90%, really plus, more than 90%, tell me light. They get a lighter feeling. So my question is, if you played a match today and you walked out on the court with this definition as your only reason for being there that day, how do you think you'd play? Almost everybody I've asked that question to says, I'd play pretty darn good. They already know. They can tell already because of the light feeling that this causes that they would probably play some pretty darn good tennis. And they're right. What is this actually doing? This definition, because it's different than yours, which was heavy, is literally causing alignment. And that's everything we're always going for. You are feeling better because you're in alignment. You have to be in alignment. Otherwise, you wouldn't feel lighter. And when yours, you looked at yours and it was heavier, you weren't in alignment at that point. Okay? Okay? So take a look at this definition. Write it on a three-by-five card. Take it out there with you. Okay, we're getting near the end of the program. Uh, now you're incredibly awake. You've been increasing your energy. You know the power of your mind now, law number three. You know just how things really work. You no longer can be confused when you're getting those experiences that you don't want. And now you know exactly what to do about it. You also have a terrific routine that we talked about after that. Uh, a pre-point routine, an in-between point routine. And it's working for you. It's working for you. You've been telling me that it's working for you. Now, let's talk about one of the other key elements of match play or competition in any form. It's the ability to be resilient. It's the ability to move through situations no matter how adverse they are. So here's something interesting. 80% of the time, we're misinterpreting what's going on right in front of us. And usually this causes a poor reaction out of habit, right? So for example, let's say you double fall on game point and your, act, your, your natural habitual reaction is to be negative and start talking down about yourself and, and, and cutting yourself down and start worrying about the future of this, of this particular match and wondering if you're, if you're gonna do it again and all these things that go on, right? These are all going on inside of our head, but here's the deal. In this particular law today, you are going to learn four questions that are in the snap of a finger by asking these four questions are going to absolutely alter the way you see every situation. You're going to expand your mind and see new possibilities that you never thought you could because right now you think your habitual reactions are just a fact and you're about to learn that they're not you are going to absolutely expand your mind in ways you never thought possible. And it's really gonna be a cool thing for you to walk out on the court and know that you can do that at any moment. Okay, so now I'm back to you live. I'm back to you live. Let me see if I can get this video back on. Oh, there I am. Hello there. 
Good to see you again. Here's what I'd like you to know about this program for going through it. Individuals will use these things for the rest of their lives. Why? Because these laws never change. They will never, ever change. Never change. 50 years from now, they'll be the same. That's one of the cool things about it. And they produce results in any situation. The juniors in particular love this, and so do their parents because their parents know that their, their kids are going to be able to rely on these things for the rest of their lives, whether they're playing tennis or not. It's a great aspect of the program. So here are the sessions in a nutshell. Session one, uh, new choices will be made because tennis players are far more awake now. Confidence is building immediately, and I mean immediately. In, in session two, now we're talking about increasing the flow of positive energy, and energy means more power, literally more power in the ground strokes and the serve, and greater consistency in overall performance. I'm talking about energy in a way that most people have not heard before, but it's very simple and very easy to understand, and that law is very applicable immediately, just like they all are. And then we're moving on to the power of the mind in a way that most people have never heard before. It's not about positive thinking. You can hear about that anywhere you want. I don't need to tell them to be more positive. They're gonna understand the power of their mind and what to focus on and why in any situation on the court. Then we talk about those routines, those pre-shot, pre-shot, pre-point routines. I work with golfers as well. Pre-point routines and in-between point routines, all designed to optimize alignment. And then we talk about adaptability in any situation. You heard a little bit of that a moment ago, talking about resilience and those four questions. They will be adaptable to any situation on the court. And I mean any situation. They will start to view differently. And then we create a new vision of themselves and their game. See, before this program, I would not try to create a new vision because they're still using that old junk that I was talking about earlier that prevents them from taking the good advice that you're giving them. So why use those lousy ingredients to try to create a new vision? It doesn't work. But at this point in the program, they're in a completely different state. So now we can create a new vision of themselves and of their game. And then we ended up with some ongoing tools for extended learning. So those are the sessions in a nutshell. I would love to team up with you. If you're a student, contact your pro to register. If you're a pro listening to this, contact me at uh, david.a.breslow at gmail.com and let's talk. I would love to talk with you further about this program. I'm excited about the opportunity for you as well. I look forward to hearing from you. Take care.